and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our new dyed pumpkin house. It's the third in our series of cute little houses. We have a mushroom house, an acorn house, and now we have a pumpkin house. So let's go ahead and check it out. This pumpkin house has a ton of pieces that are so fun to mix and match. And of course, we first have the pumpkin house. Then we have this great little stem you can add on top. We have the door for the house and a doorknob. We have the steps leading up to the house. Then we have this cute little lamp and the light for behind the lamp and a hook for the lamp as well. So you can put it on either side of the door. Then here we have the windows for the house and a little backing to add light to the window. We also have a window box and some cute little flowers that can go in that box and some flower centers to put behind. We have an adorable flower pot and the little rim of the flower pot to add as a detail. And then we have these great vines and leaves. So we have two sizes of leaves and then some cute little tendrils. And then we have tendrils that also have little leaves on them, which are so adorable. They're fun to layer both in that flower pot and also on the pumpkin. We're gonna take some time to layer all these pieces together. So here's the stem and we're gonna layer that right onto the pumpkin. And you can see that that pumpkin would be cute just on its own on a card. But of course we can add the pumpkin house elements to it. So here we have our cute little door and then the steps leading up to the door. We also have a window here. We're gonna add some liquid glue behind it so that we can add that little window backer and that's gonna be the glow coming from in the window. And the same thing with our lamp. We're gonna add the glow behind the lamp. Next, you can add a doorknob onto that door, and then we're gonna work on the flower pot. So this is the little rim for the flower pot, which you could layer on or not, but once you layer it, it looks very, very cute. And then we have this little flower and that little yellow center that goes behind to help fill in the flower. So that's gonna give you your little yellow center for your tiny flower. We're gonna add the window onto the house, and then we're gonna add that cute little window box. And then we're gonna work on a lamp. So you could put two windows on either side of the door or you can put this cute little lamp on the other side of the door and you literally just hook that lamp on the hook which is so cute and sweet, just like that. And then you can layer that right on there. And because we have them facing in both directions, you can do the lamp in both ways. Then we can layer on those cute little leaves. Those leaves are one of my favorite parts of this whole set. And then those little tendrils. I mean, how fun are they? Then here is a look at how you can add those little tendrils into the flower pot. You can also add the flowers into the flower pot too, or you can take the flowers and add them onto that window box, which looks so adorable. And then here is a close up to that cute pumpkin house with all of the fun little elements that are included in it. And next up, we're going to be creating a card with this with a really cool background and we're recreating a card by Grace that is just stunning. And we're gonna be starting off with some Bristol cardstock, which makes it much easier to do distress inking on. It's amazing what a difference it makes. And we're gonna cut it with our stitched windy backdrop, which I love for fall cards. Then we're gonna take out some milled lavender and seedless preserves distress ink. And we're gonna start with the dark there at the bottom and then we're gonna to go to the light towards the top. I continue to build up that darker purple and then at the very top, we're gonna to just blend in that light purple and go kind of back and forth between the colors until they look great. And you'll see that I'm layering over a backdrop we're gonna use in a little bit. But right there, I'm gonna take some of that Seedless Preserves, which is the darker purple, smear it on my craft mat, add a little bit of water, and then we're gonna mix that up with a paintbrush and tap the paintbrush to create cute little sprinkles all over this card that are gonna add some nice detail. And this is always my trick to make my blending look really good is the splatter somehow destroy from any uneven blending. <laughs> now here we have our meadow backdrop and I love this dye so much. I usually use it for spring, but it's really, really cute for fall too. We're going to use peel paint distress ink and mowed lawn. It's mostly going to be peel paint. And we're just gonna build that color up. Now I'm not worried about the frame part up at the top cause we're actually gonna cover that up. So I'm just trying to build up some color and then adding a little bit of that mowed lawn just to cut out the yellow. That's a tip from Grace. Kind of takes the yellow out of the peel paint but still gives you that kind of olivey look. Now we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna take our darker green, we're gonna smear it on, pick it up with some water and then tap that paintbrush to create splatters just like we did on the purple piece. Now that we have this piece splattered, we're gonna add white paint splatters to both of them to kind of help tie them both together. And it's gonna also go along with some white gel pen highlights we're gonna add to that pumpkin house. So here I have some white, it's Copic white paint, but any white acrylic paint would work. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water again, just like we did with the ink. And then we're gonna tap that paintbrush and add splatters all over both of them. And it's looking cool and adding so much texture. 
Now it's finally time to start creating our pumpkin house. So we are going to cut this out of, guess what? Canned pumpkin cardstock. So we're gonna cut the pumpkin house out of that. And then we're gonna cut some of the leaves out of cilantro and noble fur. And then we're gonna do very light inking. So I'm gonna take ripe persimmon ink and I'm just going along the top and the bottom, and that's it. And this very subtle inking adds so much. It just makes your cardstock look more dynamic and more exciting without a lot of work. So it's literally just blend, 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 blend. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And look how nice that looks. It just adds a nice little shadow. And so we're gonna repeat the same thing on our light green pieces of cardstock here. And we're just gonna layer that on. This is the mowed lawn color of Distress Ink. And we're just gonna ink just the edges just a little bit. And it just makes it look magical. I just love it. And I think it's such a nice touch that's so quick and easy. This just took me a couple of minutes. And then I just had to share you with this guy. So this is my son, Miles, and he just loves playing with all this stuff. So he was sitting on my lap and, you know, helping us put together our pumpkin house. He was just playing along with all these goodies and I just thought it was the cutest thing. So I had to share his little hands. We're teaching him young. So Miles took off to play with his cars and books and we're gonna start putting our pumpkin house together. So I didn't catch it on film because of all the excitement of Miles hanging around. So I added the little stem, the leaves and the tendril on with some liquid glue and now we're gonna start building our other pieces. So we're gonna layer this little window cut out of some paper bag cardstock onto some sticky note cardstock to be the glow for the window. And we're gonna be doing two windows for this pumpkin house. Then we're gonna add some window boxes to each of these windows just for a little extra detail. And those window boxes there are cut out of some chocolate bar cardstock just to be a little bit darker than the windows. As for the door, we're gonna do some fun layering. So I've cut the door out of some of that same paper bag cardstock that the window frames are out of. And the door has a little score line that's for you so you can bend the door and have the door open and close, which is so cute. And what I'm gonna do is actually just cut right along that score line. So that's gonna give me the door detail separate from the door frame. Then here I have a door frame and this is cut out of some ground coffee cardstock and we're gonna layer these two pieces together. First, I want there to be a glow behind this door. So what we're gonna do is just trace that door on some more sticky note cardstock and I'm just gonna cut on the inside of those pencil lines really messy and we're gonna be layering these pieces together. So I'm gonna add some little marker lines here with a dark brown marker on my window to kind of make it look like wood. Grace did this in her card. I was kind of nervous to do it but it actually turned out really cute. <laughs> We'll add some liquid glue behind the door and then we're gonna layer that onto the door frame piece. And it's really cool because now we have this multi-tone door, which is really fun. And then we're gonna add the doorknob that's also cut out of the ground coffee, which is the door frame. So it's gonna kind of bring everything in together. Then we can add some liquid glue to the back and glue on our glow there. Then we'll start to layer these pieces on the house. So we'll add the door in the middle. I always like to start in the middle and then we'll add the windows to either side and the door being in the middle helps us kind of figure out the placement for those windows. For this card, we're gonna tuck the pumpkin house into the grass, but I also want it to have it off center from the card, which is kind of a fun way to use this. I have a tendency to put it right in the center, but it's kind of cool to put it off to the side. And as I started to do that and kind of layer all of my different pieces that we're gonna to use together on there, I realized I needed to trim off part of the pumpkin to have it really be on the side. So we're just gonna just cut part of it off and it can be nice and messy because we're gonna cover it up with that stitched rectangle frame that I cut out of white cardstock. So now we can take that pumpkin house and tuck it right into that meadow backdrop. One of the reasons I love that die is you can tuck things behind, in front of, etc. those grassy pieces. And look how cute that's looking. It looks like a little storybook. Oh, I just love it so much. Next, we're going to add those steps, but I realized once I added the steps that the frame was gonna cover up that last step. So I'm just gonna trim it off so it's not in the way of the frame. And we can add those steps right on there. And the steps are part of what makes the magic for me. I, I can't tell you how much I just love them so much. I love little houses and like little gnomes and squirrels and things like that. And I think this is just so cute. So now we added some tape runner to that whole piece and we're gonna layer it onto that purple sky that we created. And now we're gonna add those white gel pen lines that I was referring to earlier when I talked about splattering the white on the background. So the white in the background is now gonna pick up the white on the pumpkin house. And by adding those white gel pen lines, it makes it look almost 3D and kind of cartoony, which I really, really love. Now we can finally add our stitched rectangle frame right on top. So I'm just gonna add some liquid glue with the glue tube and layer that and that's gonna give us our nice finished look. And then we're gonna take out some stamp sets. So first we're gonna take out our scripty autumn sentiments and we're gonna use the phrase hello fall. And I'm gonna stamp that in some juice box inks and then die cut that with the coordinating dies. 
and we're going to take out the brand new U Autumn No Stamp set and we are going to stamp, color, and die cut a bunch of these images. And these colors were so much fun because they brought in purples to traditional fall colors and oh, aren't they just gorgeous? I love them so much. And here is a look at those Copic markers in case you're interested in coloring the leaves like this. You can always just pause the video and write these down. So these are the colors that created the magic that Grace did for these leaves. So now we're going to start layering these all into the scene and I'm using tape runner for everything. There's a lot of layers, a lot going on, and I like the idea of this just being a flat card, which is rare for me, but it just looks so cute with all the layers and inking. And so we're going to have this guy bouncing into the leaves and the leaves are kind of flying off as he bounces. And then this little guy, this is my favorite. He's going to be tucked inside the door so that he's kind of peeking out the door and saying hi. We're going to add a little rake to help fill in the scene and really make it look like it's in the front of someone's house. And then this little guy is flying away on his beautiful multicolored leaf. And then we can add our sentiment. So on the hello, I just stamped it and then cut out a tiny little rectangle and we're gonna layer that under the fancy die cut of the word fall and that's gonna kind of connect those two together. And then our last step is to add this onto a card base. So we're gonna create a card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. We're we'll add some tape runner to it and then layer this whole part on top. And I just had so much fun making this card. I love that it uses a really cool die cut like the pumpkin house, but it combines it with a stamp set, which is so much fun. And I loved the subtle inking that we did to just add a little bit of life to our colored cardstock. And so this is just so fun, so magical, and uh, makes me ready for fall. And next up, Shari is going to blow you away with her beautiful inking techniques, and she's gonna get super inky, and it's super awesome. So take it away, Shari. So I'm gonna be creating a scene with the new pumpkin house die, and I'm gonna use a lot of inky techniques to color my die cut pieces. So I'm starting out with the pumpkin itself, and I'm using some dried marigold ink that I've just put all over my craft mat. I'm adding some water to it, and then I'm just going to pick it up with my paper. This is a piece of Distress White Heavy Stock Paper, and I'm just getting a good layer of that lighter color as a base for all the colors I'm gonna to add to it. And I like to dry it between layers so that I get all those kind of textures with the dots of ink and the layers of ink rather than one smooth color. So I'm just drying it, picking up more. You can see how I'm getting all that texture there. This is all still that dried marigold. I'm adding a little bit more. So the more you add, the darker that color is going to get. I'm trying to do a little bit smaller droplet so I get more texture on this layer. And then I'm drying it with my heat tool. Next, I'm going to move on to a different color. I'm gonna add in some carved pumpkins. So this is a little bit brighter orange, a little bit darker. It's gonna cover up that dried marigold a little bit. But that dried marigold was a good base for this color. I will be doing some inking once I die cut the pumpkin as well and I have the shape and I'm going to cover up some of those lighter areas. So I'm going ahead and cutting out that pumpkin house, figuring out where I want it. I'm trying to get some of those big spots in there. And then I'm going to use my blending tool and I'm going back in. This is that dried marigold again, just hitting some of those lighter areas so I get that orange color. And then at the top, I'm gonna to use some abandoned coral to give it a darker shading at the top. I'm creating a nighttime scene for my pumpkin house on this card. So I want the light source to be sort of at the bottom and it to be a little bit darker at the top. Now I'm going to ink up a piece with some Twisted Citron, and this is gonna be the piece that I cut my leaves and my vines from. So I'm just putting Twisted Citron all over this piece of paper. This is also that Distress Heavy Stock. And this is just to give me a good base to start on. So this is just a different method of inking up the piece and doing some inking techniques. I'm spraying it with some clean water and that's gonna give it some texture. So you can see there that I've just added texture to that already inked piece just by adding that water and then drying it. And then now I'm going in with some Lucky Clover which is a much darker green and just kind of adding that in on top of the texture, making sure not to cover all of it up. I still want some lighter areas, but I want some darker areas too. And I'm going back in with that Twisted Citron and blending it some more. 
So I'm going to cut out the two leaves and the stem and some of the vines that come in this die set from that green piece. And after I did that, I realized I kind of wanted some splatter textures to add to this. So I'm just going in with a dark green watercolor from my watercolor set here and just adding some splatters to the pieces I already cut as well as the piece that I inked before. So I'm gonna cut out a couple more leaves from the rest of that green piece, but now they're all going to match. Now for the door of my pumpkin house here and the window, I am filling in that yellow area, like there's a light on inside, with the yellow glitter paper. You can see I already have a couple pieces cut. But for the door, I just traced the inside of the door on the back of it and used my scissors to cut out a piece that's slightly bigger so that I can layer it behind the door frame and have that glittery yellow when the door opens. There are dies that cut out the pieces to layer behind the window and behind the little lantern. And I have those cut out of that same yellow glitter. So I'm just layering those behind these two pieces. The window is cut from some storm cloud cardstock and the lantern is cut from some black cardstock. And then I can start to assemble some of my pieces. So there's the stem that I inked and cut out earlier. I'm going to layer both of the sizes of leaves behind that stem. And then I also have the two vines that I cut out earlier that have the little tiny leaves attached to them. There are vines with leaves in this set and there are vines without leaves. So I'm using the ones with the leaves on the top of my pumpkin and then I'm going to use some of the ones that don't have leaves towards the bottom. And I'm just adding a little bit of liquid glue to the back of these to hold them in place. I like the look of this one sort of tucked behind the stem but then comes in front of the pumpkin. And then for my door and my window, I'm adding a little bit of foam tape to the back so that they pop up and have a little bit of dimension off that pumpkin base. I'm going to set my door a little bit to the side because I'm only using one window. If you wanted it really symmetrical, you can center it. I've got that little doorknob cut from some narwhal cardstock. I'm just going to add that to the door. That's going to match the narwhal cardstock that I cut the stone steps from that are going to go below the door. And then I've put a little foam square on the back of the window as well so it sort of pops out. And then for the lantern, I'm gluing the base of the hook directly to the pumpkin. And then I've got a little foam square on the back of the lantern itself and I'm going to put it through the hook and then the lantern will just be popped up, but the hook itself will be attached to the house. So it kind of looks like it's swinging out from the house. Now I'm going to work on the sky in the background part of my card. I want it to be a night sky with some pretty purple colors. So I'm starting with milled lavender at the bottom. And I'm doing this on a piece of Bristol cardstock. And then I'm going to use wilted violet. This is sort of the main color of the sky, I guess. So you get this really pretty purpley look. That milled lavender is going to give you sort of the glow at the ground level. And I'll just go back and forth between the two colors to blend them together. Next above that wilted violet, I'm going to pull in a dark blue so you really get that night sky look. So I'm using some prize ribbon. This is a really bright dark blue. But it looks really pretty blended with that wilted violet. So I'm putting a good layer of that down and then I will pull my wilted violet back in and blend those two together so that you don't get that really harsh line between the two. And then of course I always like to add a little bit of black soot right on the edges when I'm doing a nighttime sky. It just kind of really defines those edges and pulls the focal point to the center to 
the image that you're going to put on the card. So just a little bit around the edges and those top corners just kind of completes that nighttime sky look. And of course I need some stars so I'm adding my gold metallic splatters. Now I've added a little bit of foam to the back of my stone steps just so it matches up with the height of the door since the door has foam tape on the back. And then for my ground, I thought it would be fun to have this sort of magic sparkly black ground. So I've got a piece of black sparkle cardstock and I'm just going to cut the top of it with the simple stitched hillside. And it gives it that cool nighttime shimmery look as if there was like lightning bugs or cool things on the ground. I just really like the look of this glitter ground. So I'm just using some liquid glue to add that to my background piece that I inked. And then I can add this whole thing to a card base before I assemble everything. So I've put some adhesive all over the back. I'm going to add that directly to my card base. And then now I can add my pumpkin that I have assembled together. Now I want this to look like it's sitting in the pumpkin patch, so I'm using those other leaves that I cut from that green inky piece of paper that I created earlier. I'm just tucking those behind my pumpkin so that it looks like it's sitting in the middle of all the leaves and vines. I've put those big ones on each side and then I'll tuck the smaller ones behind just to kind of fill it out. I'm going to add a third small one right by the steps so that it really looks like it's tucked into those leaves and vines. And then I've also cut two of those vines that do not have the tiny leaves attached to them. These are cut from some noble fir cardstock so that they stand out a little bit more from the inked vines. And I'm just going to add one of those to each side. And then here is my finished card with that inked pumpkin and that beautiful nighttime inky sky. Thank you so much for this gorgeous card, Shari. The nighttime sky is just stunning, and I love all of the inking and the texture you added to the die cuts. It's so beautiful, and it makes me want to get inky and create a nighttime card, too. So next up, we have some gorgeous cards for the design team. And first up, we have a card by Megan that is a stunner. And what she did was she started with colored cardstock, but she added detail with her Copic markers by adding long strokes. And isn't that so stunning and beautiful? And I love the little pops of color she added on to the tendrils. Elena brought our pumpkin house into Halloween by adding cute little vellum ghosts and then the word boo up top. So sweet and so adorable and I want to make a card just like this one. I love her inking and splatters and all of that beautiful texture she created too. Here I absolutely adore how Lynette brought in one of my favorite sets, Let's Go Nuts, into this pumpkin house. Those little squirrels are absolutely perfect for hanging around and hanging inside the pumpkin house and I love that one is right behind the door too. This card by Leticia is so beautiful. I love how she stenciled those beautiful skies up top and then she's got her awesome little pumpkin house at the bottom and that polka dotted little stem is so cute and sweet and I love how the tendrils just frame her pumpkin below. And then here is the card by Grace that inspired me to make mine. It's absolutely beautiful. I just love all of her details so much on this card. So fun, so cute, and these U-Autumn no mice are perfect for this pumpkin house. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with this die, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!